Our next speaker will be Yoshi Onokawa, who will speak to us about prophylactic sclerobuckling in children. Okay. Thank you very much for the opportunity to talk about the most complex patients that you'll encounter as a retina surgeon, but something that we never really talk about. Some my disclosures. Please take a moment to watch these kids. These are kids with severe autism or other causes of developmental delay where they have uncontrollable impulses for self-injury. And these kids come with face slapping, head banging, vigorous eye rubbing. And as you can imagine, the preoperative, postoperative, and intraoperative considerations are completely different from your typical retinal detachment patients. The index patient that got me thinking about this topic was a 17-year-old teenager that I met two years ago with worsening self-injurious behavior, characterized by face slapping. Uh, during a multidisciplinary EUA, we identified bilateral traumatic cataract, one eye with a severe PVR detachment, and the other eye with no detachment, but multiple anterior breaks. So we have a management dilemma here where normally for a severe PVR detachment, these days we would normally do a buclovid oil or a vitrectomy, retinectomy oil. But these kids can't do post-op drops a lot of times. They definitely won't position, cannot position. You can't examine them post-operatively. You also can't check their eye pressures. And so these patients, if you do a vitrectomy, they're at very high risk for endophthalmitis, very high risk for IOP-related issues that may cause blindness. And what about the other eye with multiple breaks? Normally, you would do a laser retinopexy or cryo. But you can't examine them post-op. And a lot of times, the self-injurious behavior continues afterwards. And so you need a very durable option. And so what I did was a primary buckle for the PVR detachment. It's not what we would normally do, but it's what we used to do. And it worked very nicely, thankfully. And having a buckle is lower risk in these patients, I think, than a butrectomy. And in the left eye, this is very controversial, so I had a very good conversation with the parents who wished for the most uh, robust prophylactic treatment, which I thought was a buckle at the time. And it worked very nicely on a follow-up EUA one year later, and then a year after that, he remains attached nicely despite continued self-injurious behavior. So was that the right choice, though? We don't really know. And do we know how we should be treating these very complex and very vulnerable patients with severe retinal detachments where many of the usual surgical rules don't apply? And so when you don't know something, I think it's a good idea to do a study. So I called on the, our uh, wonderful community of pediatric retina surgeons, and we did a multi-center international study. Uh, this is Lissy Rawson, who uh, spearheaded the uh, data analysis. So this was a cohort of 76 patients. The mean duration of self-injurious behavior is 4.7 years. Many had face slapping, head banging, vigorous eye rubbing. Mean follow-up was pretty good, three and a half years. Because these patients can't verbalize that they can't see, a lot of times they would come in with signs of eye issues, uh, such as change in visual behavior. You know that's a bad sign because it means that both eyes are affected. Uh, a lot of patients also came with change in eye appearance, also another late finding. And we can't do uh, ophthalmoscopy in clinic most of the time, so we use B-scan ultrasonography. That's a good way to examine these kids. Sometimes you just have to do an EUA to diagnose these uh, pathologies. There were 109 total eyes with retinal detachment. 40 patients either presented with bilateral detachments or developed a subsequent detachment in the fellow eye. Many patients had PVR. Many patients had funnel RDs. Many had GRTs. The initial treatment was all over the map. Some had primary buckles. Some had vitrectomy. Some had buccal vits. Many were deemed inoperable and didn't receive any treatment. So I'm showing you some of the worst outcomes in our field. So the single surgery success rate was 22%. That was only one in five kids uh, would reattach with one surgery. The odds were better if you were able to treat the detachment with a buckle, but there are obviously many confounding factors here. Final reattachment rate was only 36%. If we change the outcome and say that, okay, the retina is attached under oil, uh, things are good, the numbers increase a little bit, but it's still really bad, 35% and 77% final reattachment. And the associations with reattachment were the use of a buckle, no funnel configuration, and lower grade of PVR, as you may imagine. And anatomy uh, corresponded with function, where worse vision at presentation correlated with lower final reattachment, and post-operative improvement in vision correlated with higher reattachment, as you can imagine. What about the fellow eyes without a retinal detachment? 
if the eyes initially had retinal tears without a detachment, non-detached if they were lasered fully or prophylactically buckled. Uh, one detached that was treated prophylactically with endolaser during a traumatic cataract extraction. Five prophylactic buckles were performed in this series, none of them detached during the follow-up period. Anecdotal, anecdotally, we know of one case that didn't uh, make it into the study that detached after the buckle, so it's still not perfect, but I think it's something we can consider. So to summarize the data, the retinal detachments in kids and young adults with self-injurious behavior, some of the worst in the VR literature. Buckles seem to be beneficial, please consider that. The fellow eyes may benefit from prophylactic treatment, uh, will benefit from prophylactic treatment, and you can consider prophylactic buckles, I believe, in these cases. Based on our experience, some recommendations we have, I think we can try pushing the envelope on doing primary buckles, even if there's PVR, and try to fix it with a buckle if you can. The fellow eyes likely to have pathology also, so please make sure to check both eyes and laser or prophylactic buckling can be considered for fellow eyes. And we have to work with other physicians and therapists to improve the self-injurious behavior because that's the biggest thing that keeps these kids from uh, reattaching. And about uh, five years ago when I was a fellow, this uh, wise man told me, we don't operate on eyes, we operate on patients. And I think these patients are a good reminder to us that we have the eye in front of us, but we have to take the entire patient into consideration about their social issues, behavioral issues, to think of the best management plan to optimize outcomes in these vulnerable patients. Thank you.